Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for your love. Thank you for bringing us here this morning to learn of you and to worship you. Bless us in this time. For Jesus' sake, amen. Thank you very much. You know, we're few in number, but you sound like a choir. So that's wonderful. We're glad to see those of you who are here, though the church is leaning a little this way and it needs a few more people over here. But they will come. Think back, when do you first remember going to Sabbath school? Now, that's a long, now this is first remember Sabbath school. When I look back, I first remember going to Sabbath school in Tallahassee, Florida. You know why I remember it? Because they had something and they had fruit cocktail. And they gave us a dish of fruit cocktail and it had a cherry in it. That's what I remember. And that was in the day before VBS, so I don't know if that was for Sabbath school or what, but I remember that. And that would have been in about 1944. And so I was just very young, very little, but the, that red cherry, that did it. I had never seen anything so fantastic in my life. Memories, they take us back. But you know, we have goals that we look ahead to. And that's what's important. What are our goals? As Sabbath school members, let's look at some of these, and I will read them from the front seat as they're on the screen. Let's look at some goals maybe we don't have or should have or have had. The four goals of Sabbath school. And I think I have that. Yeah, how'd I use it? <laughs> okay. Get this organized yet. How do I use it? When you don't know where you are going, any road will take you there. Returning seminary as an experience. What about Sabbath school? Wandering in the wilderness. What about, think for one minute, when do you first remember Sabbath school? <laughs> Sabbath school needs four goals. Fellowship, outreach, learning, and application. Sabbath school revitalization. The first goal is fellowship. PUC, and I would suppose this is Pacific Union College, did a survey and found the main reason that members didn't attend Sabbath school was lack of fellowship. Now, stop and think of that. They need people who come because they need to be loved and feel loved. <clears throat> Fellowship isn't optional. In Acts it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers. That's Acts 2.42. So they, can, they had breaking of bread. That meant fellowship. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And that's in John 13, 34, and 35. And think of that. This is a command. Love one another. Have you ever been in churches that you feel there is no love? You know, many times young people, especially, grow up thinking church is all rules. And they don't realize the rules constitute love, but rules and love can get along if we do the rules with love. Fellowship isn't optional. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill 
the law of Christ, Galatians 6, 2. So that tells us none of us should have to bear all our burdens alone. Yes, we have Jesus, but we have each other. And each person has a different area that they can specialize in, that they help another person. Someone can take food. Someone can take flowers. Someone can just take themselves and pray and care. There's many different ways, but we need to help each other carry our burdens. Fellowship isn't optional. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And sometimes we get so buried in our own interests that perhaps we do not even look around to see that the others around us have even more challenges. So let's remember it's not optional. Fellowship is something we need to help each other with. Ellen White tells us, no matter how high the profession, he whose heart is not filled with love for God and the, his fellow men is not a true disciple of Christ. What does it say? No matter how high the profession, if our heart isn't filled with love for God and fellow men, we're not a true disciple of Christ. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. That's in Acts of the Apostles 3.18. Fellowship must happen at the beginning of Sabbath school. Okay, that's right now. Turn to the person you're beside and say, welcome right now. Fellowship must happen. <laughs> also, during Sabbath school and at the end of Sabbath school, have you ever attended a place where you did not feel like you were part of the fellowship? Oh, I can assure you I have, and I can even tell you some other tales that were even worse. Maybe they thought I was a part of the enemy. That happened too. But we need to be fellowshipping with each other. Even as we sit here, we know we're here in one accord. Practical suggestions. How can we fellowship with praise and petitions? How many of us like music? A lot of people don't particularly do their, isn't, singing isn't their thing, but they still love music. And a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, and singing makes a merry heart. We need to acknowledge each attendee. Turn to the person that's beside you and say, I am glad you're here today. <laughs> Encourage discussion when it's class time. Let's hope you get to contribute to it. And if the teacher gives you an opportunity and you have something to say, don't be afraid. You're not in an enemy camp. You are here among friends. <coughs> Affirm comments. Who will contact whom? We have been in churches where that's one of the first assignments in the Sabbath school class. So-and-so is missing. Who will contact them? Who will? Who will? And people feel truly missed. The second goal of Sabbath school is outreach. The Sabbath school should be one of the greatest instrumentalities and the most effectual in bringing souls to Christ. Now think of that. This was from Ellen White's writings that that should be one of the greatest instruments we use to bring people in. Some people are afraid of church. But even Sunday school keepers are often not afraid of Sabbath school. And so we should be bringing people in to our Sabbath schools. The object of Sabbath school work should be the ingathering of souls. The object of Sabbath school work should be the ingathering of souls. The facilities could be all that could be desired, but if the children and youth are not brought to Christ, the school is a failure. <clears throat> My dad was a pastor. His theory was he would look in a church. If he saw children, it was a growing church. If he only saw our age, we won't go there, it was a dying church. His total 
idea was get the children in. And oftentimes, his first thing he did was build a church school. He was one of the pastors that went around building as he got there. He built the Lake City Church. He built the Gainesville Church. He moved and built and built. That was his thing. But be sure you accommodate the children. Three ways to do outreach in Sabbath school. PSA, which is problem, solution, and acceptance. And local class projects and missions. So these are ways to do outreach. Is there a problem? What can we do for it? Then is that the right thing to do? Projects. And then missions, which we talk about every Sabbath. <clears throat> Local class project, what will your class do to help others within your community? Do you think we've done that one very well? I'm not going to grade us because I don't think I've been doing my part on that one. What can we do? I think we do go to the fair and we do help things. So I think we have a lot of things going on here that people don't know about. So I'm sure a lot's done. Um, but what do I personally do? to help within the community. <clears throat> Church growth through Sabbath school units. That just sort of shows how it grows, different units grow different ways, good resources. This is a book evidently from Calvin Smith that he has written that give you a resource. Reinvent your Sabbath school, another book. 101 ways to reach your community. There are books out there that people have done the thinking for us if we want to read. <clears throat> Outreach is missions. The Adventists have the largest Protestant missionary network. Adventist hospitals and clinics, Maranatha Church and School Builders, Adventist Frontier Missions, we have a lot of missions. If we can't personally go to those missions, we can help support it financially. We can always pray for them. The third goal of Sabbath school is learning. This is why we call it Sabbath school. That's why if you're in Paul's class, he taught school so many years that he forgets you're not his students. He asks you for answers, doesn't he? I've heard him. <laughs> Teacher expectations. We want our teachers to be filled with the Holy Spirit and uplift Jesus. That's the important thing. We want them to be passionate sharers, and we want them to have mastered the lesson. We do not want someone going off on a tangent and leading the whole class astray. We want to make sure our teachers are firmly rooted in our message. Teacher expectations. Here we go. Summarize the lesson in one sentence. Subdivided into about three points, which are CIA, clarify, illustrate, apply. I taught school for quite a few years. At one point, I had 37 K-1 by myself, my second year of teaching. There was a lot of clarifying, illustrating, and applying. You have those points you need to do so that people understand in one sentence what's going on. Less lecturing, better questions. Restate the main points in conclusion. Okay, when we get to the end of the lesson, you will often find the teacher is sort of going back and affirming what you have discussed. And that's so still in your mind and stays. Application is the fourth goal. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. And that's found in James 4.17. Read that with me. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Sounds like an oxymoron, but... It's a real good thing to remember. The application. Are we training our members to be better sinners? When you look at this picture, 
we need to reinforce with all our members the clearness of our message. Our pastor does a good job of that. Our Sabbath school classes do that, especially with the children. Do we want them to get a good foundation in our beliefs through learning about Jesus? Another application, so what? How will your life be different because of this lesson? When you study your Sabbath school lesson, what difference does it make in your life? If you haven't studied your Sabbath school lesson, you won't know. So study your lesson. Ask next week how they applied the previous lesson. And I think your teachers, I know I've heard Paul doing that. Having been a teacher, he sort of reviews you. But that's how we can apply it. So what could Sabbath school look like? Fellowship for 10 minutes. Now, fellowship can constitute many things. Some churches you go in and the first 10 minutes are in the fellowship hall, literally having coffee and donuts. I don't think that's what necessarily I would think would be the best fellowship. Outreach, so fellowship, 10 minutes. One of the best ways to have fellowship is a good greeter at the door, right? Do you feel welcome when you come in and someone's there and they not only hand you a bulletin, but they smile and welcome you? And we have wonderful greeters. Outreach for five minutes, lesson study for 40 minutes, application for five minutes. That's 60 minutes. So a Sabbath school could look like that. Ours isn't quite like that. Each church adapts to their own needs and wants. Sabbath school is revitalized when we fellowship before, during, and afterward. Now, lest you think that this means you sit and talk before and you talk during and afterward, no. But if someone's standing beside you singing and they don't have a hymnal, we can't share a hymnal. We can smile. We can reach out and shake their hand as they come in. We do outreach within the class as a class project and support world missions. We learn and apply God's principles for living. These are ways we can revitalize our Sabbath school. Is our Sabbath school achieving these four goals? Fellowship. Do you feel welcome when you walk in the front door? We have wonderful greeters. I always do. Outreach. Maybe we're doing that. Maybe we have room for more outreach. Uh, I would like to see as many people here for Sabbath school as for church, but it's typical in our church that we don't. But maybe we could invite people. You know, Sabbath school is neat. Why don't you come? We could try. Learning. You have wonderful teachers, and I am sure you all learn a lot. We can learn even more if we study our lesson before we come. And then application. What we learn, we need to apply. What happens to something you learn if you don't apply it? It's lost. You soon forget it. So these are just things to help our Sabbath school here in the North Lake Church be the best beacon on the hill for God that we can be. Let's remember this Sabbath and this week. We represent the most wonderful God to others. We have opportunities. Let's look for them. At this time, we will have a mission spotlight. Myanmar is rich in culture, resources, and people. Also known as Burma, Myanmar has a population of almost 54 million, 90% of whom are Buddhist. Some of the hardest to reach people groups here are tribal groups. Let's journey to the north to see how education and a dedicated global mission pioneer are sparking hope among a tribal group called the Kenyan. Hello, I'm Salai Tengjowu. I'm 35 years old 
and I'm working as a global mission pioneer. This place is known as Konta. Most of the people here are tribal people, and the tribe is known as Kenya. Traditional ways of sharing the gospel are rarely effective in these communities. Perhaps that's why Christ focused on people and their needs first. This is the example Salai follows. It is not difficult for me to approach them. I simply make a visitation, a house-to-house -house visit to the people, and talk to them, and also make friends with them. Salai's wife, Kukupa, has a nursing background. Together, they teach the children of this village and also look after the sick. In an area such as this, education is one of the best ways to introduce Christ's principles and teachings. With the teaching aids that I have, I serve the children. I share with them basic education in this area. In the Kenyan tribe, it's not easy to convince parents to send their children to school because they need their children to help work the fields. After Salai and Kukupa spend time earning their trust and explaining the benefits of education for their children's future, the parents allow their children to attend school. The couple knew they would need to nurture their relationships with these parents. Right now, my wife teaches the preschool. As we render the service to the people, we continue to build their confidence and their trust in us, in what we are doing. This involves listening to the community's concerns and being aware of their feelings. Since enrollment costs can be challenging to pay for, the Global Mission Pioneer Couple makes sure education is available for everyone. Parents appreciate this and begin to notice that their children return home with much better attitudes. Over time, a number of parents have wanted to know more about the power that lies behind this amazing, life-changing school. One such parent is Muo. The reason I wanted to become an Adventist is because of the many good things I learned from my children. The Adventist school taught them many good things like the truth of Scripture and the love of God. As I learned from my children, I became convinced that I should become an Adventist like them. And now I am. Seemingly small but vitally important beginnings like this encourage Salai and other global mission pioneers like him to continue their work. The only reason I'm here is to share with them the love of God and the truth about God. Please pray for the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts so their hearts will become softer as they come close to us and as we also approach them with the truth that we know. Thank you so much for supporting us here in Tonga Village. For more information about how you can make an impact, go to www.global-mission.org. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm glad I don't have to wear that around my neck. <laughs> Were you ladies thinking that too? That was torture just to look at. We are a loving church. Let's go today with the idea of sharing all the love we can with others, bringing them to Christ so Jesus can return. At this time, we have classes that meet in here and in the hall. Uh, well, not in the hall, down the hall. You know which your class. If you see a visitor, invite him to your class, and we will go to our classes at this time.